interesting story for you guys today. Check it out. I want to talk about the strongest person, toughest, I guess you could say, that I have ever met in my life. Now, this individual was somebody who was very impressionable early on in my life. And early on, I mean early adulthood. So I was 17 years old. I walk into an MMA gym with my buddy Ian. We walk in. There was one instructor there. His name was Craig. He was, I think he was an army veteran. He was deployed like, I think it was five or six times, which was essentially the span of, I think it was like three years he was gone in either Iraq or Afghanistan. Incredible story with this individual, but he was so tough. Normally in MMA gyms, they would cost like $150 or so. This guy would charge us $10 a month. And even then he would even scratch that off because of the fact that, as he put it, if you could hang long enough, then you deserve to be there. If you pay for my rock star or monster, whatever he'd prefer, then we'll just call it good. This guy was so tough. When we first started, we had no idea what we were doing. I had a little background in wrestling, just tiny bit, and a little background in jujitsu, and that's pretty much it. He would start out by saying, hey, we are going to have a sp sparring match, air quote on the sparring match. It's not really a sparring match. It's more like a fight, but he won't fight me. It's more like he wants me to hit him unless I don't hit him, in which case he'll then hit me back. Well, when we started out, it was my turn first. So my buddy Ian was hanging off on the side and I was the one trying to fight him. And uh, <laughs> it got pretty weird pretty fast because of the fact that I couldn't hit him. When I mean I can't hit him, I meant I felt really bad when I got close to hitting him. So I would throw like a jab, like a double jab, and I would throw a cross and I would throw a hook and I would get very close. But right as I was just about to nail him, I would pull back. The very first time I did this, Craig just kind of stopped and looked at me like, what are you doing, man? And I literally looked at him like, I have no idea what I'm doing. From that point onwards, he told me, look, dude, you either hit me or I'm going to hit you. That is the point of this. I'm trying to assess where you are in terms of fighting skill. I said, okay, cool. I threw a couple more punches. I threw like a, like a double jab and I threw a cross and then I missed again. And by miss, I mean I purposely missed. He hit me real hard. He did like a bob and he weaved and then he hit me. I believe it was a like two hooks right to the body. It almost dropped me then and there. And at this moment, like, oh shit, like I might just actually get my ass beat right here, right now in front of my friend. So I started just throwing everything. Now this guy has been in so many fights that he had scar tissue in his eyebrows. And so if you, for example, were to like even flick his eyebrows, they would just start to bleed. The reason why I bring this up was because a couple days later, we were sitting on the ground. And by sitting, I mean he was sitting on the ground while I was trying to scramble and get him in my guard, but I ended up in his guard. So he's laying on his back and I'm on top of him. I didn't really know what to do. And so I threw my forearm into his throat. Now he moved his head in a way to make my elbow slip. And then I elbowed him right in the eyebrow. It slit his eyebrow open. He starts gushing blood everywhere. I was wearing a white Under Armour shirt and his eyes literally just started gushing blood and it covered me from head to toe and all of his blood. He just didn't care in the least bit. He just kept saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. We kept going and going and going. Normally in MMA fights also, you only have about three five minute rounds and championship rounds are usually about five five minute rounds. We were going for, instead of 25 minutes total, we were going for about two hours every single time, every couple days. It was absolutely brutal. And this guy would never stop. I mean, there's even times where I would throw like a hook and I got him like right in the temple and then he would drop and I would pull back and I'd apologize. And then he would get up and he'd yell at me. And let me see if I can quote him. This guy literally was like, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I looked at him like, what are you talking about, buddy? You you fell. And he's like, yeah, finish me off. Finish him off. I was like, what the hell is he talking about right now? I have no idea. What he meant was when he hits the ground because he got rocked, follow up and continue to hit him until he gets knocked out. That's what he meant. And his rationality was like, look, if he doesn't get the training now, then what happens if he's in an actual fight? And my response is, buddy, you could take anybody. So if you're in an actual fight, you'd probably just be able to finish them pretty quickly. But nonetheless, so he yelled at me for not uh, trying to knock him out. Later on down the line too, this guy forgot his mouthpiece and he decided to spar this really experienced fighter. And so during their sparring match, Craig decided to fight anyway, even though he didn't have a mouthpiece. He got punched in the mouth and the bottom tooth literally 
shot through the bottom of his lip. And so his tooth stuck out from his lip and it was gushing blood absolutely everywhere. Now I was just sitting there, I was stretching and I had no idea what was going on. All I heard was that there's a lot of blood. I looked down, there's blood all over the floor. And he literally just kind of gives me a nod and he's like, hey man, I'll be right back. Give me a second here. He walks over, he grabs some like this little bleach cleaner stuff. He cleans the floor real quick. He dabs off his lip a little bit and kind of shoves his tooth back into his mouth and then they continue to fight. That was one of the gnarliest experiences I have ever seen in my life. Now this guy is still around. He's still fighting. He's probably, I think he's probably about mid thirties at this point. And I, I'm very curious to see whatever happened to him. I lost touch with him and he's just one of those guys that you kind of look at and you know that they could probably just beat anybody's ass if they really wanted to, but he's so peaceful and so tranquil. I don't think it ever get to that point. But anyway, I thought you guys would appreciate this. And if he was ever watching these videos, I would just like to let him know that uh, that was some scary shit.